But David is the newly appointed, and David, I don't know how new it is anymore, but uh, newly appointed director of the West Tennessee, executive director of the West Tennessee River Basin Authority. Uh, he's previously a civil engineer that worked for the River Basin Authority since 2011. Native Jacksonian, I see Mayor Conger sitting there looking at me. He is a Southside Hawk, uh, which I don't know. We'll, we'll let him let him see what he has to say despite that but there, there's, uh, there's several south side hawks and i see chris phillips too so we've got several yeah, hawks. yeah well i guess i'll take back and take back what i said and the viewing is dropping as i'm the numbers dropping as i'm saying but anyway he graduated from the university of tennessee in knoxville in 2005 moved back to jackson to work at a, a firm we all know tlm and associates uh, married to a wonderful woman named heather and uh get this four daughters that age and range from seven to 13. So, uh, David, we, we're glad you're up and at them this morning and uh, kids are at school, I assume, maybe, maybe not, but thanks for, for your time. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it over to David. And like I said, he's going to go through a presentation, show us some slides, uh, give us a, a summary of sort of what they're doing, and then I'll ask some questions and you guys feel free to ask, uh, ask questions. Also, I also see uh, and maybe we can give their uh, Matt or da Danny, if you want to give your contact information in the chat feature, maybe. But uh, Matt Joyner, who is leading some efforts out there during this project that we'll cover, I'm sure, on some uh, some biking uh, resources. And then Danny, who's uh, obviously we all know with, within the running community of this town's own, too, and can do the same with running. So if you want to share that information for people that can help you do what you're trying to do and things like that, feel free to do that. So. Uh, without anything else, David, I'm going to turn it over to you and, and let you start running this thing. All right, thanks, man. And uh, if there's any kids or dogs disrupting, uh, I have no doubt it'll be my own. Uh, they are they are in the next room uh, watching Lego Ninjago, I think. So, uh, I mean, working virtually on their schoolwork. So, uh, yeah, thanks for. Thanks for having me and letting us uh, come in here and, and give an update. The primary purpose of this presentation is we're applying for a RES grant uh, to do phase two of this project. Uh, so my presentation's uh, gonna have a lot of mandatory slides uh, for, the, for the grant to, to give you a lot, make sure I hit all the, the information you need to know there. Uh, but we're also gonna have a time toward the end to talk about this project questions and and we're doing a couple others in the area that I think uh, folks know about that we're getting some questions on too so so we'll address those uh, so if I can if I can share my screen we'll just jump right in here and give me a thumbs up if everybody can see that okay well this is for the uh, the middle fork bottoms and this is um, this is a project out in uh, three-way Tennessee that is primarily a flood control project. This was an opportunity to open up some floodplain, help some flooding for Jackson and, and reduce flooding downstream for uh, farmers and agriculture. And it presented a really big opportunity for uh, recreational um, facilities. It, uh, to make it something special, feature wildlife, feature uh, hiking, biking, some kayaking, uh, a lot of habitat areas. So yeah, here we go. This, let's see if I can get y'all out of the way there. Uh, these, are, these are all the things that we think you'll be able to do on the site. Uh, there's gonna be fishing lakes. <clears throat> there's a 10 acre lake dedicated to fishing. Uh, there's a, another couple eight acre lakes. There's a big simulated oxbow that's going to have fish in it from the river that are more native. Uh, the fishing lake will be stocked uh, by the TWA, TWRA. Uh, and, you know, there's five miles of paved trail. There's over 400 acres that we can allow off-road trails. Uh, there'll be a lot of overlooks, a lot of viewing opportunities for birding and wildlife. Uh, we've mentioned the canoe, the kayak. Uh, bikes will be allowed, and there'll be some education components to it. Um, 
you know, we hope school groups can come out and see, see some of the, the diversity uh, of our site. Uh, our, our justification of need, uh, we're in, <clears throat> we're near the split from, if you're heading from Jackson to Humboldt, where you split to Medina, right in that three-way community. Uh, so it's, it's really an ideal place uh, for, for one of these opportunities. And David, just to, to sort of, for people to get their bearings, if, if, if you are a native Jacksonian, you remember where uh, Tornado Hill used to be there by three way. That's on the east side of the bypass. This project will be on the west side of the project. That road that goes to the left just past Tornado Hill was Sanders, uh, Sanders Bluff Road. Yeah. And it's, it's basically as far as you can, well, I guess as far as you can see once you turn on Sanders Bluff Road to the left for a couple of miles. Uh, they're across the street from the Maverick gas station. Uh, and you these, guys are familiar with that. These, I think I got a good picture here. I want to be sure I mentioned these are our communities that we think are in close proximity and will be a draw. These are the, the demographics with those communities according to the census. Uh, official address is 111 Sanders Bluff Road. Uh, and here's topographic maps that are really hard to read. <laughs> here's, here's a little better map. Uh, where this is Highway 45, this is the this is the split uh, just past the uh, Dutch Garden Center and all that, where you turn left on Sanders Bluff Road. The first field you see on your left starts the state property. The last field you see on the left, about two miles down the road, is the last part of the state property. It's a huge property. It's 850 acres total, <clears throat> which is about the size of Central Park. So yeah, here's a good. Here's a good picture. So this is a this is a big property. And this is our this was our last rendered master plan. So the constructed plan has a couple minor differences in the trail, but but really this captures things overall. And I have a couple slides here while I'll show uh, our construction process. We're we're in the process of building phase one right now. <clears throat> and we're probably 75, 80% done. Um, and just in general, the south side of this property is, is very wilderness, very wild, very natural area. Uh, as you move north, it, it's still natural, but now we got some primitive trails. We got a little bit of access. By the time you get over here to this corner, we got the fishing lake. We'll have a welcome center. This is the trailhead. So it's a little more manicured. So uh, we'll walk. Hey, through. David, can you go back real quick? I just want to sort of, for people like me that aren't used to looking at these maps, just to put things in perspective, that windy creek looking, looks like a snake. Right is here. the uh, kayak, yes, is the kayak canoe uh, sort of path or trail. Just for people to sort of get a size of this, that, that path is about two miles long, right? Yes. So, so that sort of puts it in perspective how big this thing is. So, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Um, and and you can see it right here. That's Doug. This is a this is a drone photo. This is uh, what we call the hunting retriever lake, uh, where it's oddly shaped, so they'll be able to test hunting dogs and and train them out there. And then in the distance, you see a, a wetland lake, and then this over here on the left is the river. So. Uh, we've done a lot of work and it's it's really coming along um, <clears throat> and to zoom in on some areas this is the this is the south side which we all call the wild west um, and and there'll be a pedestrian bridge across the river that's 150 feet long so it'll dump out at a uh, overlook viewing platform uh, on the south side and the bridge will look roughly like this. Uh, that doesn't exactly look like the Middle Fork River, but the bridge is really close. Um, and then here's another, here's another view. This is looking to the east. This is the southern half of the property. You can see we finished it about two years ago. Uh, this is Moisey Creek, which goes past Shepherd's Field and comes under Passmore Lane. Uh, so that bridge will be somewhere right in here and have an overlook at this little lake feature you can see here. And 
I wanted to show this picture in July of this year. We had a flood that entered the floodplain uh, and, and came all the way across it. And we were able to show with gauges that we actually have already improved flood outcomes for downstream and even for incoming streams uh, because we lower their outlet elevation. So that was pretty hey, cool. Hey, David, I, th I think that's a good point. And with, with Mayor Harris, I know is on here, and, and Mayor Conger, uh, the, the purpose of this, while while we're all excited about the recreational purpose uses of it, the purpose of this is to reduce flooding south of the project, uh, yeah. to reduce the impacts of flooding. And that's how this thing is being. The reason this thing has been funded is that uh, some of the neighborhoods you mentioned that, that uh, Mayor Conger and Mayor Harris may get calls about on a frequent basis about flooding every time it rains, stuff like this. The, the intended purpose of this project is to help alleviate some of that, and those residents should see that benefit uh, pretty pretty immediately, correct? Yeah, we, we've already seen it on Moise Creek. We have a long-term stream gauge that we can actually show that, um, and we've already seen it. So uh, it, it's accomplishing that purpose well. So now we're able to, to focus on that recreational component and make sure we check all the boxes. Uh, uh, moving back to the north and towards the west end, um, we we have a, a hillside sloping area that's going to be upland prairie, and this is this is probably a good place to note that, you know, as we look at these plans and we think about what we can use the property for, we get a lot of questions about, oh, well, what could go here? You know, this is upland prairie, and and our answer in a lot of instances is prairie is what goes there because um, we have a lot of habitat restoration, so we. Uh, just because it's open doesn't mean it's available, uh, but we do have areas available uh, to do some neat things. Uh, and we'll have a little road down to this wetland lake. I have some pictures of that coming up uh, where we can get in and out. We have a, a neat structure right here that, that keeps water in this oxbow lake is what we call this. Uh, and here's some renderings of an overlook on that oxbow. This, you know, you, you'll have this wetted width for about two miles and then at the far west end, there's uh, a labyrinth weir structure, and this one's this one's kind of neat and unique uh, because you see the steps in there, and and that is because this outlet connects to the river. So if the water's up in the river and you're kayaking around, you can come right up to here, drag your boat up, come up these steps, get in the Oxbow Lake, go play around there a little while, and then then go back wherever, and uh, here it is right here. It's, it's built, it's in, it exists. Uh, this is the wetland lake area. Uh, and here's, here's some of the guys doing some of the digging. Uh, so we've had, we had several site meetings where, you know, we talk about what's coming, what's coming. It's here, we're building it. Uh, so that's good. And then this getting up to our, our fishing area, our welcome center, um, you know, on the on the east side of this project, when you come in from Sanders Bluff, this is your entry, and uh, the Welcome Center trailhead will actually be over here on the lake. Uh, so, and here's some preliminary renderings of this is this is what the lake will look like. I'm not sure that that's exactly what the Welcome Center looked like, but that looks really cool. So, now that, that in there for now, that, that lake will be about 10 acres, and then in all. Uh, I guess you're going to have about 20 acres of fishable water, uh, but does that include, and I know the TWRA is going to stock those lakes, but does that include the, the two or three mile uh, canoe, which I know the canoe path, which I know our kayak path that, that will have fish in it as well. Does that include that or is that? That number that, doesn't include that. So okay. in all, we're going to have probably 50 acres or more of open water. Uh, on different parts of the property that can be fished. Um, half of it, roughly, a little more than half will have native fish species just because the river floods and that's how they get in there. Uh, and then the lake will be stocked with more typical. This, uh, this picture of the Welcome Center may be a good spot, David, uh, just to, to pause for a second and talk about the, the, the fringe group that you guys wanting to have and then that this funding uh, the funding that you received for this project is just to build it, right? You don't have any funding uh, to to maintain it. Uh, there you go. Perfect, 
perfect segue into your next slide. I'll be quiet and let you keep going. Yeah, no, you, you teed it up perfectly. Uh, phase one is for dirt work, bridges, um, erosion control, stabilization, and paving the trails uh, in the fishing lake. So we expect fully our number one uh, issue, concern, request is going to be restrooms, right? So that because that's not in this grant. Uh, that's in our phase two grant. That's that's this presentation we're doing. So phase two 2020 WTRBA res grant uh, that includes restrooms, a trailhead, uh, some site furnishings, uh, several of the scenic overlooks and a couple of the connecting boardwalks. Uh, I, I didn't mention on that last slide, there's over a mile of planned boardwalk in the woods, uh, similar to something like a Cypress Grove. Uh, and we'll, we'll get over there and, and see that in just a second. Uh, and then phase three, we'll be putting in those long boardwalks, finishing up site furnishings and hopefully funding for the Welcome Center and Nature Center and getting an idea of, of what that will be. Um, so, so this is a question we get all the time, and I know will be in the chat and has already been emailed to me. Uh, if you look at this chart, phase one, which is all the work you've already showed us, the completion date for that is June of 2021. Um, yes. that, those things should be completed and ready and open by then. Uh, starting at phase two is, is where, and this should all be coincide, right? Phase, finish phase one, start phase two, finish phase two, start phase three pending funding, I assume. Uh, and that's, that's why we're doing this uh, grant right now. Uh, but, but June, 2021 is when this phase one should be complete. Right. 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 And everything, uh, you know, if all goes well, uh, we would hope to soon as phase one's complete, people can start using it, but we put up some, you know, construction tape around the restroom area and we start building it right away. You know, you, you hope that, you can keep rolling one phase to the other. Um, but with things such as they are in the year being 2020, who knows? Fingers crossed. Um, these are a little bit of a before and after what was out there, what we expect with wetlands and boardwalks. Um, I think we've shared similar things like this before. This is uh, the boardwalk system. This is not at our site and uh, Ryan you pointed out that we will not in fact need a lighthouse out there so um, wanted to point that out for everybody to put them at ease uh, but this is the existing woodland area where the boardwalk will go and and we actually have a route mapped out uh, and this is the kind of kind of views and experience you'll have and uh, fun side note did does anybody know this plant? Uh, do you know if you pull the petals off, it, it smells like um, those little hot dogs, little Vienna sausages. Blew my mind that a flower would smell like that, but I digress. Uh, this, this is more Just of a, our- Just a good time to point out that he is a Southside High School graduate. Go, yeah. go ahead, David. Yeah, well, I thought that was interesting. Somebody- Whatever. Uh, <laughs> This is, this is an old uh, river oxbow that's going through the woods that, that connects to, there's a big pond behind like Veteran Motors and Dollar General there on Highway 45. Uh, all this stuff connects through there. Uh, these are a little more detailed information on our phase one, phase two, uh, phase three, and the things that are included in it. Our phase one grant was $5.6 million. Uh, and a huge chunk of that was dirt work. We moved a lot of dirt uh, and paving the trails, but that lays out a little, a little better what the details are. Let y'all peruse that for a second. We got, uh, I did wanna note on pedestrian bridges, we've got 12 small bridges along the trail. We have a hundred foot bridge that's a flood opening and we have a 150 foot bridge over the river to connect us to the south side. So uh, there'll be a lot of neat bridges out there too. All the trails a little bit raised up from the floodplain uh, so that you can experience the floodplain. 
Now, David, we talk about trails, and I, I think I know the answer to this, but are, they're not all going to be paved trails. And I know some of the bridges will be metal bridges. Some of them may be wood bridges, but uh, are, talk just a little bit about the, I guess, the material that's going to be used because it is a floodplain in the, on some of these trails. Some of them will be paved, but some of them may not be. Yeah, most of the trails on the north side of the, the Oxbow feature, which the long snake-like river feature, uh, will be asphalt trails. They'll be 10 foot wide and uh, ADA accessible, all that. There'll be several points where you can depart from those trails and it's, it's kind of go at your own, your own risk, your own leisure uh, to, to blaze some trails on anything further south from that. So uh, there'll be uh, pretty much whatever the, whatever the community knocks down and puts out there. Now we won't, we won't allow ATVs. Uh, so these will be hiking, mountain biking kind of trails, uh, but they, you know, they'll be what they are. Uh, there won't be any that we put in and maintain as a wilderness trail. Uh, there'll, there'll be a big diversity of, of habitat types. We've got a lot of variation across the site. The uh, upland prairie that I talked about on the far west side, we had a naturalist look at it. And uh, in that one field, and we've done nothing, uh, they found over 100 grass and, and, you know, vine shrubby species in that one field. So uh, just letting it grow, we've already seen rare birds come through, a lot of birding activities. Uh, so that was pretty cool to see. Uh, here's some more before and after what we expect on, on some of the drainage. Uh, this was Moise Creek uh, before and after, and the, the after actually looks very much like that. Uh, wish I'd thrown a picture in there, but it looks, it looks really good. Uh, getting a little down into the details of the res grant a little further. Uh, this is our budget for the grants, $500,000. The A and E on it uh, is a standard 15%, 75,000. And then the other fixtures, uh, these are our estimated cost on those. So David, I, I would think that uh, restrooms are pretty important. How, how comfortable, and I know I'm not asking you to say, yeah, we're getting this grant, but how comfortable are you that, and I know we're in the process now, how comfortable are you that we, that you'll be successful in this phase two grant? Um, yeah, I don't, any normal year, I, I'm very confident. Okay. Right now, it, it, it's all gonna depend on how, how we do through the winter, uh, how the state's doing. Um, but I, you know, I believe the money's there, the money on our side's there. So I'm, I'm confident we will get uh, at least restrooms and make that happen. But I will, I will point out for the people that if they uh, determining this grant, watch this, that the state revenue is up above budget pretty significantly. So hopefully that helps. Yeah, and it, and it is a competitive process. So uh, I don't know. I don't know who we're competing against. They may be super awesome. So we'll have to see. Uh, but I feel good about it. We meet, all, we meet a lot of the criteria. Uh, which I'll which I'll go over in a minute. This is uh, this is some digging into some of the details. If you wonder what the trash cans are going to look like out there, here you here you go. Uh, if you hate the trash cans, comment, let us know. Uh, this preliminary site plan, obviously not to scale. Uh, it's just kind of showing the flow of where the parking area is, coming past the restrooms, trailhead, and then you use the trails to get to the boardwalks overlooks. And this is the highlighted areas are where we're placing features along the map. Um, it's a little zoomed out, but here, this is an overlook on that, that long windy kayak trail. Uh, then over here on the right, this is the bridge across the river. This is the overlook of the wetland marsh area where there's gonna be a couple hundred acres where uh, waterfowl are gonna settle in. You'll be able to view them. And these are kind of what your overlooks are gonna look like. And, and not kind of, these are exactly what your overlooks are gonna look like. Go through a couple of these. 
And then uh, these next few slides, there's initiatives for the Tennessee 2020 Vision for Parks, People and Landscape. Uh, so these are the initiatives in that plan that we meet. Uh, we meet the advocacy and funding. Uh, one of the key parts of this is going to be like a state park. We're going to um, support a formation of a friends group, which is a nonprofit to support uh, things at the park, uh, events, scheduling, and and raising money for you know different things. If it's anything from from site fixtures to a special pavilion to uh, you know whatever whatever comes up that the community you know, gets behind and wants to see going out there. Uh, we're, we meet the state parks management goals. Uh, we're gonna mimic their direction. Uh, local parks and recreation. Uh, this, this increases the opportunities uh, for several communities in the area. It's a, it's a recreation one-stop. So we've got a lot of different things you can do at the site and you can do a lot of them. And I will say some of these I'm kind of clicking through. If you want to read more, uh, this is being recorded and Ryan will be made available. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. There'll be uh, social media and our web links to them on our website. Okay. So we meet the, the public health. Uh, obviously, you can get out, you can move around. Good for your health. Uh, children in nature. There's going to be a lot of educational signage. We hope. Uh, this may be a place of interest to school groups to come out and see uh, different different things about habitat and flooding and and getting out in nature, which will also meet the uh, environmental education goals. There'll be at the trailhead, there'll be signage um, and a, a kiosk that has key information on that. And it's also important to quality growth. I think from the chamber perspective, having something that adds to quality of life and, and is an attraction uh, is always good for trying to attract industry and business. Um, and I think this will add that too. Uh, we have recreational waters. Obviously if you get in a canoe or kayak and tool around or fish, uh, that's good. And and we're in West Tennessee. We have we have rural economies, so uh, anything we can do to, to boost business and and increase quality of life uh, affects those rural economies too. And that that brings us to our timeline. This is the timeline for the Res Grant. Uh, if awarded, we expect to have that phase two done in two years, um, hopefully sooner. But it does go through state process where we have to select designers and. Uh, fire marshal reviews and things like that. So I think two years is a pretty good time frame uh, for that being completed. And that concludes uh, that official presentation. So uh, these are folks who have been involved to date who have been helpful. Probably don't hit all of them, uh, but, but thank you to everybody that's gotten us this far. And uh, now I guess we can open it up to uh, some some discussion. Yeah, uh, David, a couple questions. Alan Brown uh, said, assuming phase two and three get funded through grants, what are anticipated annual expenses? Just wondering how much the friends group would be looking to carry uh, and, and maybe spend just a few minutes. I know we're, we're running over and I'll be brief and there's two more questions after this, but uh, Talk about that, the friends group, what, what they could do and any anticipated annual expenses that won't be covered by the grant. So a lot of the maintenance is covered by our agency. Um, we'll be mowing strips along the trail and a lot of the habitat is planned. So after that gets put in, it's maintained a little bit as it's growing, growing up and maturing, uh, but there's there won't be a huge amount of uh, the vegetation management stuff to do. So it'll be trash pickup um, and things like that. So I, I really don't know a, a number to throw on it. Um, it's gonna depend heavily on use. And I think that's something we'll, we'll figure out how heavily it's gonna be used once we get it open. Uh, I have a feeling it's gonna be really heavily used. So, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I don't have a handle on those costs. 
update on the uh, status of the proposed greenway from South Jackson, Bemis to, to downtown? Yes, so as uh, part of the grant that paid for uh, phase one of this project, we also got a grant for some work in Jackson, uh, several flood control structures, uh, some drainage work out at Bemis, and a greenway that'll go from roughly the farmer's market area to around the museum in Bemis, if y'all are familiar with the big pink building in Bemis. Um, the, the stage we're at now is an easement stage and it's been uh, a fun ride because it's old abandoned railroad right away. And it was right away back when railroad ruled the world. So it was written kind of special. So there were some, there were some uh, detective work to be done to find out what happens to this right away once it's abandoned by the railroad. Uh, and the answer is it reverts back to property owners and we have to uh, go through an easement process. So uh, we figured that out. We're at the easement process uh, where we're gonna start uh, discussing uh, with landowners getting those connections made through there. Lots of it is city property, uh, lots of it's municipal property, um, but that's, that's where that's at. And and just to for for Mayor Conger and Mayor Harris, so they they can uh, start using this as an answer. The the purpose of this trail is also to address flooding in the Bemis South Jackson area as well, right? Yeah, part of it was so, a, a realignment of Cane Creek from right. from about D Street to the river. Uh, we relocated and redug a mile of Cane Creek Outlet. Um, and should greatly improve uh, the outlet capacity of, of Cane Creek there. And, and that's uh, going to be, I think, a three mile trail that's about 10 feet wide. It's going to be paved asphalt. Yes, and it, it's up on that old railroad right of way. And it has a 250 foot bridge across the South Fork, Fork Deer and then several other bridges uh, as you go through those low flats on the north side and then it'll cross that railroad uh, and come out somewhere over behind JTA. Yeah, that's gonna be really neat. Uh, Lauren Kirk, who's really, really smart, just comments that corporate sponsorships are also a strong possibility. Uh, much like Shelby Farms, sponsor name goes on the visitor center, the trailhead signs, things like that, stuff to think about. Uh, another question is, will the public have to wait until the end of phase one to go on site? Probably a pretty good question, considering it's construction going on right now, David. Uh, yes, I would. I would encourage them to uh, wait until that is complete, because besides construction work, um, there's there's habitat work going on, there's invasive species management going on. Uh, so, yeah, do not get out and explore the property until it's open, and if you have a large truck that can go through mud, please, please, please don't explore that area. <laughs> uh, because uh, we have a lot of federal wetland areas that we're planting certain species and uh, that just that just wouldn't be good. All uh, right. Last question, because I know we're over. Uh, Matt, first of all, if you want to talk to somebody about uh, helping with the biking group, uh, Matt Joyner with the running group, Danny Crossett. Matt points out that three miles of trails uh, is really six miles if you leave downtown, go to Bemis and come back. But I guess he points that out because he knows I'm going to ride out there and then have somebody pick me up and bring me back. Uh, Chris Phillips asked this, David, good question. Pending a 100-year water event, which, will, which this will help with flooding in the surrounding area, but is there a contingency plan to handle the buildup of soil runoff in these newly developed areas, lessening their effect? The the build buildup of soil runoff and yeah. sediment, right? Yeah. So uh, a lot of our design, when just for general information, uh, I consider sediment and trying to get the geometry right to flush and to, and to keep sediment uh, out of the channels. Um, and there will be areas here where this is gonna flood every year. This is probably gonna flood a couple times a year, um, not over the trails all that often, but it will sometimes. 
And we want sediment in the floodplain, not in the channel. So there'll be big areas where we have some levee openings. You're gonna see a huge splay of sand. That's, that's exactly what we want. We're gonna get the sand out of the channel, into the floodplain. Um, so that if we keep it open and keep the geometry right, the sand in the channel should not be an issue. That kind of, did that get at your question? Um, Ryan, can you unmute if you ask some questions? On, uh, on Lauren's comment about corporate sponsorship and friends group, uh, I, I do want to tell everybody, stay tuned. We will be starting that friends group where uh, you can join up and, and be a member and we'll, uh, you know, it will be similar to like a Shelby Farms friends group. Um, so stay tuned there and that'll be an opportunity for the, the corporate sponsors, I think. Uh, before, before I log off, Matt or, or Danny, do you guys have any, uh, I know you guys are, are doing a lot of work out there and may have some, uh, opportunities or questions and I know I'm putting you on the spot, but. Uh, as far as I know, what, I, what the plan for building off-road type trails will probably be is to wait until the majority of it is in place as far as we start getting some growth uh, growth from the woods and the, the natural grasses coming back in. And then we'll, we'll look at where the best lines for the off-road trails will be. But uh, we can probably build that on a volunteer basis. Uh, it's not super labor intensive, but it does take a few people but we won't have like heavy machinery or anything out there. So we'll be able to uh, basically go in there after most of it's complete and align the trails where they need to be on the highest spots and go from there. But it'll probably be later next summer till we start on that. All right. I'm so Ryan, uh, Ryan and the running's about the same as uh, of course, as soon as they have the paved trails and will let us on there, we'll try to have an event to, to uh, a running event to kind of bring up the excitement of the of the new park. But the the backside, it's gonna it's it's like he said, it's gonna be a little while before we can even think about that. So. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, David, two more questions. Uh, camping opportunities. Uh, any any camping opportunities out there? There there won't be any any campsites, any RV sites. Uh, you know that's not to say the Boy Scouts don't request uh, you know a weekend to do to do something out there. Um, but you are in a in a floodplain in a marshy floodplain. Uh, so depending on the time of year, I'm not sure I'd want to camp there necessarily. Uh, but this is a good place to point that, that this is a feature anchor. There's a lot of property surrounding that there's going to be opportunity to, to have things that are complementary and adjacent. Um, you know, some development opportunity, I think, some, some outfitters, uh, some campgrounds. Uh, but largely the park is a floodplain park and, and, you know, will remain mostly that. Yeah, and I, th I think this thing can be as nice as the public wants to be, uh, but it's going to take the public investing in it themselves to, to make it more than what you build it. Uh, just because the grant's going to cover the construction of it, and then after that, it's sort of up to the friends group to, to make it to many improvements. I do think one opportunity will be, as you start looking at the, all the fishing and kayaking, and uh, it's some type of uh, outfitting store or uh, somebody wants to open a, a, a store out there that rents kayaks and sells fishing license and worms and things like that that seems like a logical uh, opportunity for somebody uh, and I, another question we just got which I know you you can't answer I don't think is will Sanders Bluff Road be repaved anytime soon uh, that's probably a, I, I actually can speak to that okay uh, good from the Welcome Center to Highway 45, the um, City of Three Way has has promised to repave that and and get that entrance nice. Once we're done with the really big trucks, 
right. and, and asphalt and things like that. Uh, so that portion uh, is a yes, and we'll be um, there's a there's a drainage to the west. We'll be talking with the the county some on maybe replacing that that culvert that's been an issue if we need to. Um, but yeah. Well, that shows you what all I know. Well, great. Thanks, Mayor of Three Way. Um, that's exciting. May consider some wildlife grants like Ducks Unlimited, Wild Turkey Federation, et cetera. And I know that this project is 850 acres, but uh, there's some additional acreage that the TWRA, and maybe while you're on this map, you can show that. Uh, and it's an additional, what, 400 something acres? Yeah, there's, if y'all can see my cursor on the left here, this property uh, is another about 400 acres. So overall, there's about 1,200 down through there. And the, the grand plan for this one is not, not complete. So uh, it, it may end up being hunting related. Uh, it, it's refuge right now. Uh, so, you know, nobody roll out there and go hunting, <laughs> but that may be in the future. Sorry, somebody's texting me a question. I'm not using the chat feature. Asking about Mayor Conger's hair, if you can believe it. It is nice. I, I, am, I am envious of Mayor Conger's hair. I'm going to say that Kenny has the best hair on this today. I. I'll take anything I can get. <laughs> there you go, Chris. Uh, what about concerts out there? It's the, la the last question I got. I could see something, you know, over by the Welcome Center and that open space over there. Um, we don't have plans for an amphitheater or anything like that. But again, that's something that's going to be have to be community supported. The friends group is going to be really important to this because our agency is a watershed agency. We're not, we're not a parks agency. Uh, so we won't, we won't have a ranger. We won't have, you know, interpretive stuff we, we support. So anything like that has to come and be supported by our friends group, so. Right. And then there's no, there's no plans for residential near, on this property for sure. And then I don't get, maybe Northwest would be the best the only option and that wouldn't be included in this project right that's that's not part of this property traditionally that's what three ways bins a residential bedroom community development so I, I i would expect that probably continues uh places to keep uh to get information i know there's a facebook page matt may want to talk about that but then you've got a website too david that you guys put out some information, www.middleforkbottoms.com. Yeah, the um, when the when the friends group is formed and up and running, that's going to be the best place to get information. That will be that will be updated. Um, right now, it's just a bunch of dirt moving construction pictures. Until um, we get it in and start using it, there's really not a lot more to share. Um, but yeah, the that, Twitter, the Facebook, those are the good, good spots. And then Matt, you're working on the Facebook page, which I guess will be Middle Fork Bottoms. What, what's the name of that group? I believe uh, Brandy at or with David is working on oh. actually setting it up for now. And then uh, we'll just start populating it with information as it comes in. Like David said, I went out there and looked the other day and it's uh it's not very photogenic. It's really cool if you know what they're doing, <laughs> but it looks like a lot of brown dirt. So we haven't really posted, or we won't really be posting a whole lot till we start getting a little bit more stuff in there. But I think it'll uh, it'll come along and be a good place that we can post information about when we do start building trails and stuff like that, and what access you can have. And and Danny can post like when we start doing if they start doing runs and stuff out there. We can do all that through that. All right, thank, thanks, Matt. So I'm gonna give about 30 seconds for anybody else that's got an, another question. Uh, any brief info on connecting Middle Fork to Bemis uh, via a greenway? And that, that, that's a great question. And you, you, you start talking about 
some of the larger cities and they have a greenway that goes all the way around the community. And David, you may can talk to this a little bit. And I, but I think that the first step of that is getting these sort of anchors around the community and then then maybe working backwards on getting them connected. But yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I defer to the city on that. Uh, except I know that Stan Pilot and and their planning had worked um, on bike routes and connectivity plans, and there are there are big comprehensive plans, and there's some some pieces that could really be connected together and uh, and have a really awesome network. So I think we're on the verge of of some really cool things. All right. Well, I think that's the last question I had, and I don't want to keep you guys any longer than I need to. So David, is there anything else that we covered, uh, didn't cover that you need to or would like to uh, regarding the project? Um, no, I think we think we covered it. I thank you for the questions, the support, and for 52 people coming on at 8:30 to look at this project. That's that's awesome. It shows we got some good support. So. Um, I tell you, one question is uh, for, for Mr. Harold Carter. I know this this will be saved and pushed out on our social media and website, but is this PowerPoint, David, is it available anywhere? Uh, yes, it can be. It, it is available. Uh, if you have a spot to host it, I'll save and send over to you or or, or we can put it up uh, on the TDEC website. Yeah, just uh, shoot it to, to Jill maybe and we'll, we'll, we'll put it out. Uh, okay. On our location, I'm sure Kenneth with the uh, with the city would want it too. Maybe they can they can share it uh, along with this presentation. But again, thank you, David. I know you're you're busy. We appreciate you and uh, this project, and we're excited about it. You know, 850 to twelve hundred acres, twenty acres fishable water, two miles of kayak access, many miles of paved and unpaid path, uh, trails. It's just going to be exciting. Not to mention the the one out south that's going to be three miles paved and 10 feet wide. So uh, this that's all great. But when you throw in the fact that it's going to address flooding uh, throughout the community, it's even better. So thanks for all that you guys are doing. Uh, thank you guys for, for joining us. Uh, and I'm going to sign us off. All right. Thanks for the support. See you guys. Thanks, guys.